okay, okay, hear me out. I have a way to save the Batgirl movie. And some of you aren't going to like it, but here we go. What's happening, Internet? K-Wing here, and I've been pondering in the dark here at 4 a.m. trying to think about what we can do for Batgirl. Even though I don't think the movie is that great, um, I still think there's a way to save the movie. And if the studio or the directors or anybody wants to uh, use this idea, feel free to. So one of the major problems with Batgirl is, well, I mean, there's there's a lot. Continuity is one. Continuity doesn't make any sense. When you had the directors go and have an interview just a few months ago, and people were asking them, how is Michael Keaton Batman? Their response was, he just is. You'll have to see other Warner Brother movies to figure it out. And we're sure the studio can fix our movies, so it makes sense. And it's like, what? So they didn't even know. They were just like, we're just putting our childhood Batman in this movie. And we're taking Commissioner Gordon from Ben Affleck's movie and sticking it in there. In fact, we're going to have references to BVS and Michael Keaton's Batman and put them both in the movie. And you're just like, what? So so the movie has like a lot of Easter eggs to throwbacks to Keaton's Batman movie, uh, Batman and Batman Returns. Plus, it has elements of Ben Affleck's Batman, BVS and Justice League, and even the Man of Steel, but without Superman. Or is it without Superman? Doesn't really matter. So the first thing that you can do in the movie is you need to fix the continuity. And how you do that is you remove scenes that don't make sense. So since the Flash is gone, probably, I'm not saying that is a bad omen, we don't know. At the time of recording this video, I have no idea what's going on with the Flash. There's people talking on Twitter that it's going to get shelved too, that Zaslav is mad or whatever. He's crazed with power and, you know, poor Ezra Miller's next. Whatever. I don't know. But the most important thing you can do to get this movie released, remove all ties to the Flash. Get rid of them. If there's any scenes with any characters talking about Flashpoint or how the world feels strange, get rid of all those conversations. Just, it's called editing. Just snip, gone, bye. Okay? Any newspaper articles that have references to BVS, Man of Steel, get rid of them. You want to keep the Court of Owls stuff with a crazed Dick Grayson talking about how he survived, you know, being put into a cult? You can keep that. That's an Easter egg to the Court of Owls. That's fine. Maybe the Court of Owls will show up in another DC movie. I don't know. Just anything. MV. Anything. BVS, uh, Man of Steel, Justice League, or Flash, remove. Now, all the Snyder stuff is gone right? The next thing you do is you need to input a lot more of Michael Keaton's stuff. One of the things that you can do, which Michael Keaton was a fan of, is the idea that Batman has not been active for years. In the movie, if you want to make it over the death of Barbara Gordon's mom, fine. But I don't think that's really enough to get Batman to just give up on society. One person gets blown up by a bomb. No. So you could... Um, use some reasoning that Batman hasn't been around before. If there's no scene about that, do with the Frank Miller thing. Use a news anchor guy. Put some dude in front of a green screen, give him a script, and talk about how crime is rampant and Batman hasn't been around for years, and even show the mural of Batman and Robin being all faded. Just like that. Boom. Fixed. You don't have to talk about Robin. You don't have to talk about Batman. Gotham doesn't look like it's in the best shape because Batman hasn't been around anymore. So you could remove all the things about him being active or whatever, and you could even implement, like, the last sighting of Batman was 30 years ago or, you know, maybe 35 years ago. Something like that. Something that would show that he was still active after Batman Returns for a little bit and then just have him disappear. And the whole idea of the movie is he comes back as Batman, but he doesn't want to. <laughs> so, but that's how you could fix that. So just one sequence with some guy on the news talking about how Batman's not around anymore. And then he comes back. And not because of Firefly, I don't know. Maybe he sees something in himself, in Leslie Grace's thing. But according to things that happened... How do I explain this? Um, according to test screenings and things that happened with Michael Keaton's Batman, is you know how in Spider-Man No Way Home... Um, Spoilers, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield were treated with the utmost respect of their characters, and it was kind of like a refreshing uh, reprisal of those roles. Like, they never 
um, missed the spandex. They were like in character and everything was great. And everybody was just so thrilled to have them there. Yeah, maybe Michael Keaton got that in the flash, but he basically just had like 15 or 20 minutes of showtime in Batgirl, if that. And for the most part, it's not the type of thing that a lot of us fans of Keaton would be thrilled with. Girl versus boy mechanic. And I know, I know, face palm, but I mean, based on who's writing the movie... I mean, was it really that much of a stretch? Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, when I heard this, I was furious. I didn't want to believe it. And then the test screenings happened. And a lot of my concerns about Michael Keaton in Batgirl were kind of made into reality to some extent. Um, he has some cool flashback scenes, uh, mainly his stunt guy. You know, still showing that a 70-year-old can be Batman, even though technically he was a stunt guy playing Batman. And Michael Keaton plays Batman the way that you, the fans, and I, who grew up with Michael Keaton as Batman, are expecting. You know, he's very quiet. Uh, he says a few lines once in a while, a lot of body language, a lot of acting with his eyes. But, you know, for people in the 2020s, that can come out as kind of being a toxic male. So, uh, the reception will be better in The Flash. In fact, uh, most of the test screenings for The Flash with Michael Keaton in it have been overly positive. Everybody loves the fact that Keaton's in it. But in the Batgirl movie, they don't explain why he's Batman. He's just Batman. He's always been Batman. Uh, Jim Gordon didn't talk to Affleck's Batman. He talked to Michael Keaton. So, how they could do this is, again, you need to tie this into Michael Keaton's universe. I think fans would like that, but at the same time, if you release this movie, I think fans of Michael Keaton are going to want the, uh, the the crew tar and feathered because, woo, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a film. It's cinema. It's cinema. Okay. But again, this is just how to get the movie released. So tie it to Batman Returns. Um, make it so that Commissioner Gordon isn't J.K. Simmons Commissioner Gordon, who he's playing. Uh, basically, he's Pat Hingle that somehow got younger and uh, discovered Subway or a total gym. You know, I mean, make it work somehow. Uh, J.K. Simmons and Leslie Grace have great chemistry. Um, you know, Commissioner Gordon is a great asset to the movie. Um, Batman and Commissioner Gordon stuff is really good. Uh, the Firefly and Leslie Grace stuff is okay. Brendan Fraser did really good in the test screenings, um, although people were kind of uh, surprised that a man that big could fly. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm supposed to be helping, and I'm not. Mm. Okay, uh, what else could you do? Um, since the budget is a concern, and the movie is basically filmed uh, for streaming services, right? Um, sell the movie to Amazon or YouTube, and they like movies like this, and it actually would fit. You could make it an exclusive for YouTube and sell it around Christmas time. They could do the remaining VFX, because that's kind of how the movie looks anyway. I wouldn't put too much money into it, um, but, you know, they could charge, like, make it part of YouTube Red or something and have some deal with Warner Brothers. I don't think releasing on HBO Max is going to be really possibility, because, I mean... I don't think, excuse me, I'm laughing. I don't think that they want it. Um, so give it to a company that, you know, really panders to certain groups and go with it. I mean, look at how well Lord of the Rings is doing on Amazon. <clears throat> um, sell it to them. Uh, I still think the film should uh, see the light of day. But at the same time, um, I don't believe it should start any universe. Because, again, um, this movie is less about Batgirl and more about Batwoman Beyond. Leslie Grace doesn't really have the acting chops to stand next to Michael Keaton. It was not a good choice. And it, it comes off as kind of like awkward, um, I would say. Now remember, Leslie Grace has only had one... I'm not even calling this movie a hit. I'm not going to be one of those shows. In the Heights was stupid. It was not a very good musical. Crazy Rich Asians was a way better movie. In the Heights is bad. Just cringeworthy bad. And the thing is, there were actually other actresses who um, tried out for the role of Batgirl that had hit movies, and Leslie Grace was the one who got the, the role, even though her movie stunk. It, like, was a bomb. Um, and it always kind of surprised me that she beat out these other actresses that she was 
vying for the role. But in all honesty, I think that a lot of those actresses, which is very common today, bowed out of the role. And you see a lot of voice actors doing this a lot. Um, Not to say that Leslie is a bad actress, but she was going up against veterans. So something there was kind of fishy. But again, that's how Warner Media has done things for years. Warner Discovery isn't really going to do that anymore. But anyway, I was trying to be positive about this. This is really hard. Uh, Let's see. What were my bullet points again? So change continuity to 89. uh, Release the movie on a streaming service that isn't HBO Max. um, Edit out parts and references to any type of Snyderverse or DC shared universe movie because that never happened in Keaton's thing. In fact, he never had a Superman to begin with. So any reference to Superman whatsoever in the movie, whether characters wearing a T-shirt or whatever, get rid of it because that never happened in Keaton's universe. Ever. And the comic books don't count because um, in the films, which Keaton is based on, you know, his appearance, there was never a Superman. There were no metahumans. There was nothing. There was Michael Keaton and Gotham, and that's it. Um, So you could build up on that, and you could do that. And there would be a way to do it. Heck, if they sent me the movie, I could edit it together and give you a good version of the Batgirl thing, way better than any studio could edit it. Anyway, um, yeah, that's how I would um, deal with the movie. I think that it, it's possible to fix a lot of the problems uh, with the continuity and just release it. But at the same time, do we really want the movie to come out? Ugh. But I'm still waiting on uh, a contact giving me access to the Batgirl script because I want to do a video on it. I really, really want to talk about um, some <clears throat> aspects of the film that I, I don't think people are going to like. Uh, and also give my spin on how they could have improved it. But yeah, that's it. That's all. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Um, In the comment section below, tell me what you would do to release the uh, Batgirl movie. I could go on and on about things that I don't like about it and don't like about production, but this was supposed to be a positive video. I don't know if I really succeeded in that regard or not, but (laughs) I had fun. Um, So anyway, you guys have a great rest of your day. Uh, We'll be talking about Gotham Knights stuff because IGN is going to be releasing tons of little tidbits. Although I'm kind of waiting for them to like literally sue people because this is quote unquote exclusive content. And when I was a game journalist and we were working at a company, we had to check to see who had a timed exclusive so that there was no legal mumbo jumbo involved. And now today IGN releases things and YouTubers are like, oh my gosh, IGN got a first look. I'm going to download their video. And, you know, put it up there for the whole world to see. And it's like, I know I did that too, but I'm just kind of following the other lemmings off the cliff and waiting to see who gets sued, I guess. But technically, there were rules. They weren't guidelines like the Pirate's Code. There are actual legal rules in terms of publications getting exclusive rights to things. There's supposed to be NDAs and all this other stuff. I I really don't know how YouTube operates. I'm just waiting for someone to get sued. I just am. Hopefully it won't be me. But anyway, uh, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I've got like a ton of crap to do uh, with live streams and stuff. I'm I'm deep into Xenoblade and uh, I've got more multiverses today and I don't know. But yeah, uh, good luck Batgirl production. I wish you guys well on the next movie that you do. And hopefully, you know, Michael Keaton will get that Batman Beyond movie that the fans want. And hopefully Leslie Grace will get some type of superhero role that she wants. But it's probably not going to be Batgirl. Or I could be wrong and the film will somehow miraculously release because of a fan campaign. Lightning can strike twice, right? Right? All right, guys. God bless and happy gaming. Uh, Keep it locked here for more things on Batman in movies, TV, video games, and on the rare occasion, comics. Later, Gothamites.